short rest with Fonzie and Carla. I would like to start now. Uh, All right. So I am okay. recording. Uh, uh, have you had your coffee yet, my friend? Wait, la, wait, la. I, I need to. Uh, no. Nice mug. Um, butterscotch. What <laughs> pagkain yung yung banta? Butterscotch and rain. <laughs> last week Skyrim me. Eh. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. All right. All so, right. what's up, Carlo? It's nice hey, to see you again, man. After yeah. it's been a while, like yeah. eight hours approximately. <laughs> yeah, um, we've been, we've been, no, we've been cola. I've, I've been, we've been collab with a good friend of ours, CJT. We'll post a shout out in this in my channel, na lang. Uh, and he'll have content uh, with us in there, uh, in his uh, channel as well. Um, mm-hmm. see, it would be in the description because we have upcoming content, uh, video content where we play the game. Yeah, we so, won't, we won't want to spoil anything, um, but yes. just watch it. It's it's hilarious. It was hilarious <laughs> playing with you guys with such amazing, you know, um, circumstances. Yeah, and I just really would cool. just like to say that my. Um, the role playing played there does not necessarily represent my ideals <laughs> and who I am as a person. It's it just a, a game. <laughs> yeah, we made some tough calls during that game. And speaking of tough calls, we've been doing some uh, over the week because Rick. And since um, it's uh, the weekend again, ladies and gentlemen, you know what that means. Um, it's time for a short rest. Mm-hmm. Short rest came a little earlier because Friday last yesterday Friday we're shooting on a Saturday. I don't know if we have to mention that in the podcast, but hey, just so you guys know how much we uh, crank content out. Uh, short rest came easy. This uh, short rest came um, early this this week. Um, it was a um, it was a long weekend. Friday was a holiday, and yeah, um, here we are. Um, just. Um, just um dusting the uh, dusting our armor off of the innards of last week's work tasks and stuff yeah and would, yeah would you like to roll some hit dice yeah i would like to roll some hit dice indeed um last week was pretty busy i um i'm almost 50 percent done with some of my reviews for my anime reviews nice. <laughs> my channel is is that for uh, work w- uh, oh, that's well, no, it's yeah, that's for my thing. Yeah, uh, likewise, likewise, we've been very productive. Um, that dead, deadlines are being met, naman, and yeah, it's um, it's been a it's, I, all, I, all I want to say is we're just like I'm kind of grateful that we're busy, like busy to the extent that we have to pull out, we have to go OT sometimes because not everyone has that. Um, and all like if you're busy that means that there's work there's abundance of work there's an abundance of uh, opportunity so mm-hmm. in a way i'm grateful for that but yeah um i i, I uh, this is a much needed short dress um that was just yesterday i was you know with some family members they helped me move move most of my stuff now out mm-hmm. of my old pad and into the new one i got to you know catch up with them yesterday and it was good yeah. Uh, really? Generally speaking, it wasn't such a rough week. Um, nothing bad happened last week. <laughs> so I think it, I think the whole bad thing happening uh, is a monthly thing mm-hmm. uh, in 2020. So yeah, I'm good. How about you, Fonzi? Um, roll some hit dice, please. Yeah. So this week has been interesting. Um, I got caught by uh, <laughs> driving. Um, no, I. It's a driving. I got caught by LTO. Okay. I won't go into the details as to how. <laughs> My license has been confiscated, and I have to get oh, no. it on Tuesday. Okay. It kind of sucks. 
but hey, it's, uh, it's rolling from the dice, right? Uh, and you know, it's been a tough week for me, essentially just because of other things going on. Um, but you know, just being able to recenter and to be able to do things that I love and just go into and focus into that has been really helpful. Like, I, like to be honest, I haven't thought about that infraction or that incident, which really just brought me down just for the entire day. But I haven't thought about it after I've been focusing so much on our game, which we did. Hey, you played again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been prepping, uh, taking some time to prep for that uh, particular game. I did some time to really just focus in and just, just you know, focus on what I love, which has been really, bit, uh, which is, has been really helpful. In terms of like dealing with the stress, because there's nothing I can do about that. I just have to go to LTO Tuesday morning and pay my fine and get my license and move on. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's good to know, man. Yeah. Um. Is that why you? Uh, by the way, viewers, I think Fonzi wants to be a cyclist now. <laughs> is oh, that yeah. why you? Know? Is that why you? No, not you really. Want? But oh, I, okay. I, I just really wanted to. Like, I've been waking up. Uh, super early for work but now that I got kind of like prom- promoted I didn't need to wake up as early but I mm-hmm. wake up early anyway so there's a span of time in between you know I wake up 5 a.m. in the morning and 7 a.m. and I usually do work but there's a span of time there that I think I can allocate to some form of exercise like biking just go yeah. on bike ride for an hour come back 6 a.m. and start work uh, I think that would be really helpful for my health. Um, yeah, just focusing on myself now and just promoting my own health. So I've been shopping around for bikes and asking yeah. <laughs> you for referrals, for uh, suggestions of what bikes I could get. And I've s- literally circled almost all the bike shops in Davao. And my God, there has been a, a really low uh, supply of bike stuff in top of now. Oh no, how so? Yeah, there, Man, there's no I, bikes. I did, there's just I, no I did bikes. see your post about the mountain bikes. Like, Dude, oh. I, I circled about, I, I haven't circled every, right? So I maybe I visited more than 10 and only oh, like gosh. two of them had frames and frames are way above my my budget because I have a budget. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't want to spend like a hundred thousand pesos on a beginner bike, right? So yeah, I, yeah. So I just just want to go mid tier maybe and mid tier mountain bike or mid tier road yeah. bike would do. There's just no stop for mid tiers <laughs> like me. <laughs> Speaking it's of, go, it's either go really cheap or really expensive. Or, yeah, I think yeah. Um, even then, after you like, if you really, if you really get on the um, cycling train, I don't know what that means. But when you get into cycling, um, and if you have the means, um, sometimes the up the upgrades are necessary, mm-hmm. particularly because these upgrades fulfill a certain um, fulfill certain functions uh, when it comes to your bike. So if you want to bike comfortably. Like the standard um, real derailleur or the, the group set won't work because it's you ha- you, you you find yourself constantly pushing or uh, pulling your legs too hard and then you eventually have to upgrade. So I guess uh, what you're doing is right. Find the right you know find find the basic set first and then upgrade from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this isn't a bike podcast. Okay, let's talk about the just a track. Well, it could be. <laughs> Welcome to our first episode of. The short bike. <laughs> the short ride. The short ride. <laughs> short ride. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's our sorry. that's us rolling some hit dice. If you yeah. would want to roll some hit dice, just send your complaints about your week <laughs> our way. And we yeah. will send you some, you know, songs of rest, encourage you a little bit, coach you through some through some difficult situations. Yeah. And or we'll craft I, poems for you. Yep. And send you <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah for anyone who would send us your, um, your uh, r- if you would want to roll some hit dice, Carla will write you a poem. <laughs> That's, yeah, sure, why not? Give, give more workload for me. For my <laughs> channel. I'll read them out too. Like I'll write them in haiku form. Or haiku form. Oh gosh, haiku. 
anyway yeah so um i uh we were, we had a game uh this week early this week mm-hmm. not early actually late into the week it's thursday we had the game thursday night and um it was your uh it wasn't your regular game i'd say and i'm sure that um this isn't new to everyone like the idea of an all barred party isn't necessarily new uh but i we wanted to try it Actually, I'm not sure, but I mentioned it in the group chat that uh, Fonzie um, uh, let me into. Uh, uh, you guys want to start an all bard party? <laughs> and everyone's like, yo, sige nga, tara, let's go. And then everyone made their bards. Everyone made their uh, 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 new t- tier one. This was a tier one um, uh, game after all. And we were like, okay. And everyone was having the, uh, prior to the actual game, everyone was so excited telling them or telling uh, each other about the, their characters. And it's great because this is where the creativity comes in. Right. Like we're not super focused on making the most powerful characters. Mm-hmm. We're, super, we, we're really focused on just getting this um, ba- uh, all barred party started. <laughs> Yep, and we had a bunch of names that we um, came up with prior to the game. Uh, there was Bardi B. Uh, shout out to Luke. Let go of that man. I'm not doing a TikTok on that. Bardi B. Uh, <laughs> we had a uh, uh, role. Uh, I, I, no, it's um, uh, 20D or uh, 20 Direction. It's a parody of One Direction. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then there, there were so many, but we ended up coming up with um, the uh, uh, name, which happened in game of Kenzie and the Pussycats. On account of we have two tabaxi or tabaxi in our um, mm-hmm. in our party, uh, we have this <laughs> this um, this U one T um, player character known as Kenzie. And you know what? It sounded so. Uh, it sounded so uh, close to Josie and the Pussycats. Might as well. Absolutely. Fitting because our. <laughs> fitting because our um, new uh in the Discord um, voice channel that we have was playing uh, <laughs> a lot of flute sounds. You know, you know the the lousy flute say uh, mm-hmm. flute playing. Yeah. So <laughs> could I mean could some of the. Uh, content that he posted there, and he did he did that every time he did something uh, uh, weird, <laughs> or every time it's um specific to the adventure, and yeah, we it was a fun game mostly because um yeah we didn't know what to expect like we had ideas of uh, no we're an old party board and our HP at the time was like maximum of ten. <laughs> It's so scary for a DM. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, like uh, just to go on a, a little bit of a tangent, during my DM prep, uh, I asked you guys to send me screenshots of your character sheets. And I've been seeing your HP 7, HP 6, <laughs> HP 10. Oh my God. And I went back to like looking at my encounters. If they're, oh, Yeah, they're going to die here. <laughs> die here. <laughs> okay, it's time to nerf some encounters then. <laughs> So yeah, just going back to that, I was just legitimate. Yeah, you were down. You guys went down a lot, right? All of our encounters, someone went down. It was mostly Lester. <laughs> Damn it, Lester. Yeah, it was up. so funny. <laughs> it was so funny because you would inspire each other. Like <laughs> during combat. Oh my God. It's, it's what you called. <laughs> what really got me that night was you calling it an affirmation circle. <laughs> <laughs> really <I> mean, weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good. I know I am. I know I am. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just a bunch of bards. I don't want to say being full of themselves, but being overly confident that they can do this, and they did at that particular or during those two uh, mm. adventures that we had, and yeah. it was great because, uh, like, even as bards, like uh, we know how um, flexible bards can be. Right, they have the spells. They have they have the spells to do damage. They have spells to, um, to uh, to 
to heal. They have the spells to stun. Uh, they have they have utility essentially, mm-hmm. and just I guess what uh, what really cemented it's too it's too early to say. We just we've just had one game, but uh, and everyone's already starting to think about do uh, multi classing. In my mind, I'm like, no, don't don't multi class. We want to <laughs> see how far we get being an all bird party. <laughs> That I understand why, because that game, uh, yeah, that game, that that game got us. <laughs> I went yeah. down several times, and we were all armed with rapiers. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> you you um, think that? I'm... <laughs> yeah, so, so just to give you guys like a uh, like a picture of what went down. So, um, <laughs> they were an all bard party, and they were assigned by the Adventures League, since this was an Adventures League. Um, module uh, a legal module uh, they were an all bard party and they went into an out, the outskirts of Flan into this town to the crossing inn so I changed the module a little bit to fit in to, to kind of like represent like there was a wedding and they were hired to be the wedding singers wedding for singers. this particular uh, <laughs> wedding that kind of like in the organization and the invitation of families into the wedding kind of like got derailed because of a certain family causing ruckus, like the girls, right? And that the, uh, but just being uh, regular wedding singers and, you know, just affiliated with Adventures League, it would have made sense for the family to approach them given their affiliation if they would be willing to lend their support and their expertise, and given that they're they're an old bard party, uh, how they went about the mission was interesting. And um, in terms of like you would see like in in the the combat sense, like they wanted to fit certain or particular role in the party that is outside <laughs> their class, which is funny, and which caused them a lot of like like missed opportunities or just not being able to see like the power of an old war party. That's insane, right? <laughs> and w- one particular instance when you decided to just cast sleep, right? If you played meta, you could have been very OP. Um, and and that in that sense, and I appreciate that you guys didn't. And I feel like uh, the bards, um, you, some of you or even most of you played uh uh, bard perfectly like that's how a bard should be, like in the part <laughs> just a bunch of idiots with <laughs> right. just charm people <laughs> try to charm people and talk them out of the situations and yeah. encourage each other yeah. and just be that kind of like it, it was a mess the combat yeah. is a mess <laughs> it was so initially f- yeah it was so funny because I was nerfing a lot of the encounters because you were <laughs> literally the 10 HP was highest and some of the damage there was like 1d6 plus 4 and uh, <laughs> 2d4 plus 3. So just one hit would take you down for tier 1 gaming and that, that's kind of like scary, right? So, yeah, yeah. But I appreciate like you guys being able to uh, figure it out, like how you can adapt certain play styles or there are certain other facets to the game aside from combat mm. and it was interesting to play with you guys and with an old board party that was my first time as well like gaming an old board party <laughs> it was crazy it was crazy um I did, I did manage to record some of it like in the start but then that just decided not to so that I just focus on DMing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll come up with that record. We'll come up with more games, I'm sure, that yeah. I'll probably I'll record. Yeah, and you didn't finish the module. So the, the, Yeah, there is definitely a follow up game. Half uh you spent like was it four hours? Did we play four hours? Four hours, yeah. Four hours. Yeah. We started seven thirty, we ended around uh yeah, but so we, we did four 11, hours. Almost yeah. 12, right? Uh-huh. And it was, and not a dull moment, moment, right? Not a dull yeah, moment. not a dull moment and, at all. And no, and it was just a, it was just the flow of the game, right? The combat yeah. was a little bit long, but <laughs> just because of the party comp. But um, aside from that, like everything from the role play was so fun to play with uh, yeah. that group. It's it's cool too. Uh, well, initially, like uh, we never uh, we we thought that we could like um, 
charm our way out of everything. Like we had this, um, we we had or or I had I had this um, uh, going into the game. No, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna kill like or we're not gonna fight humans. So we're we're going we can do this. We're an all bard party. We can charm our way out of this. And then <laughs> I didn't consider that we would be put up against um, uh, things that don't understand our language. So beasts, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there are blights, mm-hmm. <laughs> creatures that don't, that aren't necessarily uh, sentient to the extent that they would negotiate. And I was like, oh, we did not consider that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah, it was it it was a uh, it's it's cool. Uh, but yeah, let's see how far we could get into this. Well, well you did manage to like uh, escape one encounter, the one with the the guards, right? And the negotiation oh, yeah. gone wrong because there was yeah. a, there was a situation where you were you um, kind of like caught two people uh, like uh, managing a deal of some sorts, and it kind of like yeah. went wrong, and you. Jumped out of the bush one by one playing <laughs> instruments. That was so stupid. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I started playing instruments. Like, I, I it was like, like that a he... very poorly executed like flash mob. Just imagine a group of bards like come out of the bush out of nowhere with their lutes and their flutes just humming about. <laughs> Kind of that like a flash weird. mob, which is why I kind of like, is this a kind of like a surprise? Is that the NPC was just asking. It was so crazy. But you managed yeah. to you managed to talk your way out of that. So that was uh, particularly interesting how that played out. And instead of fighting the guards, you fought lights. <laughs> Damn it. How, how are we going to negotiate with lights? How are they going to make us love us? <laughs> but yeah, um... So it, again, it was a fun game. Um, we came like I, I've been telling everyone. Okay, guys, I'm gonna be the cleric of the party, meaning I'll do the healing. Everyone else will do their roles of damage, of mm. uh, utility, etc. And it played out well. Um, thanks. Uh, like, well, a lot of us went down. Um, not that like no one really died. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm hoping we get a little more tankier as uh, games progress. Mm-hmm. But it kind of um, during those games when I see when I saw my two tabaxi friends, uh, Luke and Lester, uh, going down, I'm like, oh shit, party composition is important. <laughs> yeah, so there needs to be someone who is uh, who'll take the damage. There needs to be someone who's uh, doling out the damage and there needs to be someone who is kind of like handling things from within, just uh, keeping things together, making sure that the battlefield is properly managed and Mm -hmm. optimized to the extent that the party will win. And yeah, I am. That's our, that's actually our main topic for today. Mm -hmm. Um, Battle composition. Uh, and um, my thoughts on it as a player is, well, based on the all bard party, you can tell that I'm still experimenting. <laughs> like, I wanted to see how it would do. And so far, it's doing well for the first game. I don't know uh, about the next few games, however. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think if we if we want to start up, if you want to start a good or a, a um, um, a reasonably uh, competent, a reasonably competent party. Um, you need to co- consider three roles. Uh, one would be the damage dealer or the damage taker, rather. Another would be the damage dealer, and the the third one would primarily be um, the uh, healer or the mm-hmm. support character. So basically, yeah. this system has been this system has been um. Adopted by other uh, video games, mm-hmm. uh, not just sorry, even tabletop games, uh, role-playing games. So someone needs to fulfill their roles uh, in these games in order to fulfill a certain task, and the roles expanded as uh, uh, as um, the mecha- or as game mechanics expanded as well. So okay, there are um, there are a lot of enemies like. For example, there are a lot of enemies surrounding us. How do we manage to do this? Have them focus their damage on the tank, have the healers repeatedly mm-hmm. uh, heal the tank, and have the damage dealer 
um, repeatedly. Um, the, I have the damage dealer just take those out so that it's much easier for the tank and the healer to just um, do about their business, mm-hmm. right? But as uh, 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 when when other mechanics get into the game, like if these uh, enemies have, for example, um, poison uh, poison uh, a, a poison status inflicted on the tank, then damage becomes bigger, uh, and it um, it it um, stacks over time. It's mm-hmm. going to be harder for the tank and for the support to. Um, um, catch up so they'll need someone who can at least min- minimize actions mm-hmm. that's where the utility character comes in he doesn't exactly do damage he doesn't exactly um take that or take as much damage but he can like stop people stop your stop some enemies from doing mm-hmm. um these these actions so uh, this is a perfect example of the uh, utility character would be the monk Mm-hmm. He's not as tanky as the barbarian. Doesn't do as much damage as a barbarian, but he 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 has a stunning strike. is a very valuable asset when it comes to um yeah when it, when it comes to uh, combat encounters, mm-hmm. right? And he isn't he isn't he isn't the face of the party either. Uh, more or less, charisma for the monk is a dump stat, right? So yeah. Um, this is where the, the, that's that's my experience of how or, or that's how I think a party should consider um, like if they're going to get into a game everyone should uh, talk with each other about that who's going to do who's going to be tank who's going to be um, the, uh, DPS or damage uh, the damage dealer is going to be the support who's going to be the um, the face of the party and who's going to be like the um, who's going to be utility, who's going to do the rest of the stuff that other people don't want to do. And like, it's, um, well, what was that point I was going to make? Uh, th- these roles should play into how these, or at least so that uh, the other player or the players don't feel like uh, left out or bored in the game, I guess. is going to consider that the, the person's play style. Is he like in other video games? Is he usually the damage per second guy? Mm-hmm. Is he the guy who heals a lot? Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, um, uh, when 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 I get into my games or when I get new people into my uh, Dungeons and Dragons games, I ask them, uh, and when I uh, ask them, you know, about uh, like, uh, or or when they want to get into Dungeons and Dragons, rather, I ask them what their usual playstyle is. Like, if you are in a party. How are you as a per like what's your personality? Are you usually the one who mm-hmm. uh, goes are you the confrontational type mm-hmm. like are you ready to put up fists <laughs> once it's you know? or are you really the diplomatic type? Yeah. Are you the kind of person who um supports another person by giving a big old hug or giving him words of inspiration mm-hmm. so yeah that, that's that, that's something that I consider if they want to join my game and they don't know what class to play when it comes to dungeons and dragons. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, yeah, and that's pretty uh, much what I have to yeah. say. Yeah, like excellent, excellent points that you made uh, about party compositions and what particular roles they were saying. Absolutely great points. And you know, going into like an encounter like with an all like one class system, it's not really far fetched. Uh, it's not really a far fetched idea because realistically, like as you're training. You know, with your training and with your before you even go out to adventure, you're essentially, you know, with your classmates and you're just an all bar party, yeah. just going about it, right? But there's a particular thing about going into specializations, right? About bards, because it is possible to go through a module or and succeed in a module having just one class there are just limitations to what you can do like for example if you're five barbarians and you're fighting a dragon well shit you're in trouble because you won't be able to fly and reach there so it's just about addressing and being wise about how you go about combat and particularly like what what other people don't necessarily understand is positioning like there is a very important thing there about party comp and understanding your party comp and where you would position yourself in relation to your other parties uh, other party roles right so if you were like if you didn't have a tank it would make sense to clump up 
right? Because it, you, you have nothing to clump up to. Um, <laughs> essentially, uh, that would happen. You would, cling, you would cling to a tank because you'd rather have someone take the damage in front of, in front of you or beside you. And to be able to um, have someone to go to you immediately if in case, you know, an enemy uh, goes to you and sits beside you. So one of the things that happened during the game was just that they, they were just clumped up and not really move, using their movement to spread out. Yeah. And that could have been a lot, of, uh, a lot of trouble for some of the encounters. But then again, like, realistically, that's not something that you would, you know, um, you would think about. Like, let's spread out and just cast our spells there. Spells. And you, you would, like, in the later, probably, like, in the later years... Like as you get to tier two or maybe even tier three, you would probably encounter much more uh, interesting uh, enemies in terms of like their ability to cast spells. And I think you're a lore bard, right? Yeah, I'm a lore bard. Yeah, and I think you're the only one. I think so. I, I th- yeah, I think I'm the only one. The others would uh be uh sword bard and sword bard and um I don't know about the others. I think there's a valor bard as well, yeah. College of Valor. But I I I um, I'm pretty sure I, I I'm going uh lore because I wanna play the support and utility of the group. Mm-hmm. So like for example, you get to level three or four or five or tier two, right? And you're going yeah. to face maybe spell casting um spell casting creatures right because or even um stealthy creatures that are not you know i don't that you're not I able never to thought see, of that. right yeah so that's that's a challenge for your party and just being able <laughs> to have certain particular roles to address the flexibility of combat situations when we have a balanced party comp uh that's the benefit because regardless of what the DM throws at you, you'd be ready to face it, right? Yeah. And for this particular bard party, like um, how are you able to address certain situations or like a, like a, like singular targets are no problem for you because that's just a walk, walk in the park. Just, yeah. You, you know, uh, dominate person maybe or hold person maybe or stuff yeah. like that. So that's not really a problem. But what if there are certain situations that are kind of like very difficult? How would your party be able to respond there? And that's really just my just my challenge for players. Like moving forward, like that's what you should expect if you would want to have like an interesting game moving forward. Um, and, I guess. In, sorry, uh, coming out of that uh, or off of that uh, discussion, we had. I hope we can talk about that one uh, encounter we had. The Sturgis encounter where they were just dropping off like flies. Mm -hmm. Well, they're actually flies. Sorry. (laughs) They were just popping out of nowhere. I was very, I was genuinely scared for that because you're right. If if it's just one target and it's one focus point, we could Mm -hmm. do, we could, we we can handle that. But if it's everywhere and we have really low HP and we're scattered, like I don't have that feeling of someone beside me to support me emotionally and physically. <laughs> it's, 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 it's scary. Mm-hmm. And that's, that was the most, that was, uh, that was, the, that was the most, um, that's where my big, that's where big brain Carlos started to, okay, what are we going to do? These guys, uh, we were, we might be surrounded at any time. Cause you mentioned in that particular counter that the Sturges were there minding their business. Some of them, uh, might come down. Some of them, them might not. We we should roll a d4 dice to find out if they do. And um, fucking Kenzie, like um, MVP or <laughs> player of the game, he just um, what he did was he um, put to sleep the Sturges near that boy that we needed to save. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, we can use sleep. Oh fuck, we, that's a that's a spell we have. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah, I, that was so. I after that sleep spell uh i was a little bit more confident but i i did mention i think we all all everyone in the party uh needed uh had this sense that yeah we gotta get out of here we we, we can't you don't have that many spells like um vicious mockery is cool but we don't have that many damage dealing spells so yeah 
Mm-hmm. That, that that's a you're right. You're, uh, what I'm saying is you're totally right about uh, that particular encounter. And mm-hmm. these were just like practically fly sturges, right? Mm-hmm. For the regular party, they're no problem. But for a bard party, crap. <laughs> like AOE spells, um, like very important for sturges because sturges have, have only two HP. So if yeah. you hit, they're dead. But if yeah. they're like if they're plenty, you die. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely. It, so. That would be would have been a possibility because you know every round I would uh, roll a d4 to see how many surges will appear and join in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you did not manage to defeat the surges uh, around, it would just add and add and add and add. So eventually, if you didn't get out of there, um, you would have died. Like it, yeah. There, there was just no way for you guys to win it unless you had some kind of like uh, a huge. Uh, AOE spell AOE. would encompass the entire cavern, which was, yeah. you know, which is certainly a possibility. But you know. we did, yeah, I didn't wanna, we, we, like, we just wanted to get out of there. That was my first instinct: get the boy out, get back in. That's it. That, we we couldn't fight that much. Yeah. Like thunder wave could be very useful, but we only have like two spell slots. Yeah, and that would <laughs> alert every fucking story. every other cavern. exactly. <laughs> and hey, it's a cave. I'm pretty fucking sure that it's not only the Sturges that will be attracting. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe, you know, the, an owl bear appears. Oh, God. <laughs> owl bear at the. <laughs> then, no, we're dead. That's bards, pa kami, no? Like, what spells do we have against it? Anyway, yeah. Go on. Go on. Sorry, Fonzie. Yeah. So, so what do you feel like, uh, given that you, um, you're an old all bard party and came off from a tier one experience, would you recommend it to other players out there to play an all bard party? Uh, if you guys are in you, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Like, uh, I'd rather you guys enjoy the game playing your roles that you're comfortable with. Again, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a fantasy game where you live out your fantasy. If you want to be that smooth talking bard, be that. If you want to be that rough and gruff barbarian warrior, Go be that, you know. So I, I wouldn't recommend the doll bard party. However, if you've been in the D and D for a while, and you probably know every role or, there, or every class there is, I've played one. And if you want to do it for shits and giggles, go ahead, do an old bard party. Because mm-hmm. if anything, I think that drew out the role play guy in me. Mm-hmm. Like I felt myself. I felt like at at the time, Fonzie. I was like, okay, what would what would K and Heaven Song do? He's the he's always been the face, but what happens when his teammates is the face of the are all faces of of the party, right? So how would I react? Yeah, I think in terms of uh, bringing out the role play side of players, do it. That's a that's a good way to um to that's a good way to start the or to start the party. Yeah, but yeah. And it, and just a DM tip, like if you if you do ma- if you're a DM and you do manage to encounter an all bard party, oh, yeah. please be compassionate and have fun <laughs> <laughs> because they will die if you want. They they could <laughs> right because it's just they're so frail and so fragile. But uh, as DMs, we should always look towards creating the most fun, uh, the most fun out of the group. So if it makes sense, you know. Punish them, bring them down for a little bit, but don't kill them. Yeah, don't have them be fun. Yeah. Unless so, you're like, a... yeah, like realistically speaking, like I was taking into consideration. All I think party composition should all should also be considered in calculating for APL. APL being, you know, how you would. Um, uh, arrange a certain or set certain encounter difficulties. Mm. Like if you d- if you did see like a bunch of level level f- um, level fours on a tier one match without a cleric, like that would probably influence your idea of what type of you know encounter you would set upon them given the given their party comp. So if you want it to be more challenging, you always look at their party comp and adjust you know adjust. Um, Appropriately, a key word there is appropriately. Yeah, appropriately. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you would want a very enjoyable game, and if you feel like the dynamic of the group is good, like they, 
interact with the story, they're engaged. I feel like they are they should be rewarded in some sense and some rewards would go into maybe having the damage or maybe fudging some roles you know? <laughs> or maybe not killing them outright you know, or not double tapping and stuff like that. <laughs> That's the that's the reward that we can give for great games, and I feel like as DMs you do, you you can feel or you can be connected to your players just based on what's going on with the story, and I guess with our format, like as we're going into that, like um, what do you feel like is the difference between the format we did or we did with, kind of like in your terms you called it like an online live table. Yeah, we okay, guys. So Fon, um, uh, Fonzi uh, had this setup at home where he had uh, the grid table, right? And then he had a bunch of lights on it and some cameras. And yeah, um, I I feel like it's way better than Roll Twenty. In what sense? Uh, no, uh, in the sense that I'm actually immersed. I'm talking with people. And I am into the story. I'm, I'm, and I'm absolutely sure it's not just because we are playing an all bard party and we have to come up with uh, the right things to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. But just being able to see like faces or avatars uh, in a screen without like being in the browser, like all the, at that at the time we're just looking at um, a, a, the Discord uh, bar and not just a browser. Mm-hmm. That feels so. That feels like I'm there. It it it's a more, it's a more engaging experience. To be honest, just being yeah. able to see that, and I kind of wish that everyone else had cameras because, <laughs> like, we would see how they would react, right? Well, I understand yeah, for, that for the later part, like, uh, I, I, it's not to say like um, it's difficult for DMs to be able to pull this off because on the later part, my camera, my DSLR. Uh, mm-hmm kind of got depleted in battery <laughs> so, I didn't uh, yeah. so I just switched to my phone it, because I had we ran the game on Discord and then I was share and I had a backup setup where I had a, another alternate uh, like a alternate account for my phone for Discord and it's called like the action camera and stuff like that mm-hmm. so it just had its camera on and the camera was pointed towards the battle map that I created and some tokens and some dice for monster tokens and stuff like that. Yeah. And essentially, it was just on all the time during combat. And I would just turn it off after combat. So just we could just talk. And my camera was up when I was, you know, role-playing, role-playing NPCs and stuff. And I think generally that's what you don't see. Um, like the, the connection to the DM. And, yeah. and being able to see your DM and his facial expressions and his uh, gestures... And even, you know, seeing some of the players, like you had your camera on, I think, and but most yeah. of them didn't, but it that doesn't necessarily matter for me. But it's more or less, it's much easier for me to convey certain emotions and certain, you know, certain situations when I can get to use my face, you know, yeah. because, you know, at heart, you know, um, I'm a theater nerd at heart, you know, and I, I love acting. And this is precisely why I went into D&D, because I could go into acting. Or dip into a little bit of acting. So that's what's missing for me in Roll20, I think. In most of the online VTTs. Um, mm. I like online virtual tabletops. Like um, Foundry is great in terms of like mechanics and stuff. But just being able to see your DM makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Um, I think it also helps now when we have this video. Like there's... F- like being vi- being able to visually see feedback and not just hear it mm. helps a lot. Like, oh... I have someone in my party who's going to help me with a particular task. This is why, going off tangent a little bit, this is why when we have our team calls, our team scrum calls at work, we always have the camera on. It's so that we, are, we know that we are connected or we are aligned with what we do. Because there is a difference between just having a, a call and being able to visually see your, uh, your teammate. And it helped so much that I was able to see. At the later parts of the game, we kind of turned it off for, um, for the purposes of just having good connection. But I ha- I'm pretty goddamn sure that we would have a lot of, like, we would uh, be, like, uh, m- more, th- more immersed and more um, 
uh, have not necessarily more fun because we had a lot of fun at that. We would be more immersed if we saw each other mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah. But yeah, in, in, ter- in, in terms of, I know, in terms of gameplay, this is the closest thing you could get to a live table because there's an actual, besides the fact that there is an actual table right there, just being able to see and hear your um, your um, party mates without the distraction or the temptation of opening another uh, another uh, Chrome tab or opening another browser tab to look at whatever it is that I need to look at. Being mm. solely in that moment, being in the moment of being with your friends and playing, that's what something that Roll20, unless I know that it depends on the player, but that's something that Roll20 um, uh, Roll20 uh, di- La- that's something that Roll Twenty is lacking for me. Yeah, and like it, even yeah, it and it can't facilitate. Um, I think like with Discord only, you would know when you, a player has disconnected. In a sense, like disconnected, not you know physically disconnected, but just you know just disconnected with the story, where yeah. they're not really paying attention, and it and it kind of like disrupts the group, right? When you yeah. have one player who is distracted or doing doing something else. It's crucial that everyone is locked in. Well, it doesn't really, you know, because it just adds more flavor, just more to add, yeah. adds more fun to the game. And I think with Discord, it helps. This with Discord, I'm a, a little bit more strict in terms of like how I, I I manage games, because I don't like distractions, and especially with an audio format only. Like I would need, or like how you would play or DM over the actual games you wouldn't want to play it in a very noisy venue right yeah. it's not conducive to getting into the dm shoes and thinking about npcs and stuff you'd want a really uh a quieter or a more private mm-hmm. setting where no when where no uh, uh distractions would be happening and also like there are table rules against you know taking calls while playing the game or you know, looking at your phone and stuff like that and not really listening and, you know, side talk and stuff like that. That Those are things that DMs manage with over-the-table games that are more or less easier to manage when you're in Discord because you're more focused in. With yeah. Rule 20, it's so easy to disconnect, like you were saying, because there's a lot yeah. of information you're looking at, like from your character sheet to the possibility of, like, going into another tab or just, you know, disconnecting because... You you know that yeah. your information is just there anyway, and you won't miss a beat because you won't. You, you just have to just come back into combat and stuff like that. You don't have to understand yeah. what's going on. That's and I think that's what's so good about our party. Parang everyone was into the was really into it because yeah, there wasn't really uh, anything to distract them. Like by if ever uh, let's just. Let's just have a picture of, like, let's just flash a picture of the scenery done in the camera. Sure. <laughs> diba? Para everyone will just look at that. Diba? Sure. Para and, up. Is yeah. It? And, and, you know, it's easy for DMs to just be able to do. That. All you really need to do is have you know, maybe a separate computer. Or if you yeah. want to use your phone, you can for Discord. You just need a really good, maybe like a good Bluetooth um, headset or um, like a long wire for your headset and maybe just a mount or a monopod for your oh, yeah. camera. Let's, let's get into that, Fonzie. How did you design the... the well, it was heavily camera. inspired by Critical Role. You know, Hell and, yeah. the, <laughs> and it, the Critical Role's magic on being able to draw you into their virtual tabletop, essentially, mm-hmm. and playing a live game virtually and just being able to see miniatures and how they interact in terms of like the map and stuff, it just really inspired. Hmm, maybe I can recreate this somehow, you know, a bootleg version of this. Like, uh, so I just got my. I have a battle map here that I use for my live games. I printed out some tokens that I tokens here of you guys. Like, if you can see tokens, of you yeah, guys. one peso coin. That's the- <laughs> Well, That's literally up. one of our tabaxi. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Antonio. <laughs> Antonio. And like Luke was hilarious playing Antonio, dude. Um, yeah. yeah, and I just, you know, I put my, this is the grid that you can, this is the grid that you can buy off like 
fully booked or if you, if you want just make a tarp or something like this yeah. i would lay it out on like a like a table and then i would position my camera like a bird's eye view of the entire map and that's it like if you would like to um and that's it in terms of like how it is the game is managed you're able to see uh, the entirety of the map you're able to see your tokens in relation to everything going on mm-hmm. and you know and just uh, and just manage it from there. And I, and part of the immersion, really, of that experience. Um, oops, that's up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Back in Boulder Skate. Back in <laughs> Boulder Skate. Part of the immersion, really, is just seeing a human being controlling <laughs> your characters, I think. I mean, that's just part of it. And, you know, and part of it also is the allure of, you know, and the communication that you're telling and the connection that you form with your DM, the DM, I would like to move forward. Okay, you move here. So you get to see how your DM moves your character. So there's that connection, right? Like in terms of Roll20, you just move your character and there's no real, <laughs> you just, you, there's no real communication in terms of that. So yeah. I feel like that, that constant need for connection is what yeah. makes or what adds to the immersion. I, f- I feel like I feel like if if you're absolutely right, it's it's the connection with your players, then eh? like mm-hmm. uh, it. I, I don't wanna be you know I don't wanna like I, I'm already starting to be bold enough to say that um, the kind of um, game that we have an all body part not only because of practicality, say that's not the kind of thing you would normally see in like most adventure. Uh, mm-hmm. Adventures league tables, like yeah. I don't wanna get. I don't wanna get into it because we've already. I've already raged for that uh, second episode that we have. But yeah, it's it's really just like at this point, I'm starting to believe that if you wanna play Dungeons and Dragons, like you gotta find a good set of friends, talaga to play it with. Because mm-hmm. not everyone will share the same quote unquote purpose of playing the game. Yeah, like if and, you're, yeah, very, uh-huh. that's very that's very accurate. Like, um, there is a palpable difference between playing with your friends and playing with strangers. Uh, it in a sense that it's still very fun to be able to play with strangers because you yeah. manage to form connections in terms of that. But you you don't get to try weird shit with them, not right <laughs> off the bat, right? Yeah, you kind of like have to build rapport in game, and yeah. that's just how we interact. You know, we're yeah. more open. We're more. Uh, we exert more or have more enjoyable experiences with people we love and we have already established connections with rather than those who we still have to build rapport with. Right. right. So there's just that. That's just really uh, the possibility. And sharing this game with friends just uh, allows for a more, much more better experience because there's creativity. There's... Um, there's this uh, sense of safety in terms of like trying new stuff. You, yeah. you don't have to feel judged for being an all barred party. Like no judgments yeah. were made. Or even if there were judgments made, you wouldn't give a fuck because these are your friends. And they were laughing. You guys were laughing <laughs> almost all night, dude. That was so fun. That was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it was, it was the, yeah. Uh, uh, going, uh, Going off of what you said about uh, being able to um, play with friends, and I remember that yeah, Lester was there again because I I think uh, for a time he fell out out of love of D and D, and then he's like, "Oh, you're back, <laughs> nice." I still want to kill your warlock though, but it's nice to see. Shout out to Lester for being in that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think with Lester, it's always been. Uh, uh, just him just being able to sit down and have some time for himself. Yeah. Uh, okay. I understand how busy he is. But yeah, it's a, it, it's a, it, it's, it's a, like you're, you're, to, you, to, you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned that it's fun to also play with strangers because, I mean, that's how we, that's how friends start, I guess. Mm-hmm. You meet yeah. a total stranger, find out if you vibe with him well, then invite him or her over for a game with your other friends and see if they yeah. mix. Yeah, like with coming into like the MD in Davao City, um, mm-hmm. I knew no one <laughs> from the <laughs> DD community, so it's just me looking for games. And the first game that I had was super awkward because I didn't know who the people were, so I was just in a cafe 
very quiet cafe and I saw someone like preparing his dice. So parang two and two together, this might be the table of DM someone so and so. So it's just that, you know, that 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 old awkwardness and the situation and stuff like that in D and D. Just having a good time with the people you don't know necessarily. But eventually, you get to know them as you play and as you play. And as you start to DM, you get to know players who are in the same boat as you. So essentially, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, managing that. And with, the, with how I played D&D, uh, I got to meet a lot of people in Davao who shared the same passion for the game. That essentially, like, if I wanted to run a game, I'll just post in our Davao group and I'd have a game, like, within the week. Like it's su- it's super easy uh, to be able to run it. It's just it's just that. Yeah, yeah. I I also think that like, and this is why I'm like super heavily considering, um, I'm heavily considering just being uh, uh resurrecting yung old homebrew game natin, the mm-hmm. one that I know, the one where you had to save Elsa, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, because. With friends, you're a, with with friends who have uh, written stories for their characters already, and that as a DM, you have insight into this these characters. Mm-hmm. Like being able to create and uh, supplement stories for your characters and their backstories as a DM, like it feels rewarding to have things ano eh, to have things happen for that partic- for that particular player. Mm-hmm. Uh, story wise and it's it's an element into it's an element in the in the game that you're playing mm-hmm. uh, it's something that it's something that's not in uh that's something that's not totally inherent when it comes to playing tables um home uh it, it's a it's it's um it's an experience eh? uh i guess what what made me say this is uh why having french perfect um, the idea being that having uh, your friends play D and D with you most of the time, and for your homebrew games, is because uh, you don't necessarily get the um, plot points for your character uh, become resolved, or conflict for your characters become resolved in a regular public table, mm-hmm. whereas in in a closed group, in a homebrew game, or even in an adventurous league game, depending, mm-hmm. you get to resolve that. Eh? I I I got I got that from um I think it was episode one or two of Critical Role. I hope you don't mind I getting into it. When everyone in the group finds out that the uh, druid Viridian that uh, that they're talking to was actually key. Spoiler lift. warning. Oh shit! Spoiler warning <laughs> <laughs> was actually um. We'll put it up there. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. So, uh, na parang there, ano, there, uh, the, the, the druid that they were talking to was actually Keyleth's mom. And this was Keyleth, a character being from uh, Critical Role 1. And we, I had this kind of experience in one of the homebrew games that I played under si Dick naman. He made a homebrew game. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, parang, oh shit, this was my, uh, this was uh, all the people that my ex sent to kill me. So, parang, Having that, I know, having that fulfillment of just um, having your backstory implemented in the story, and having your friends play along with it, being able to uh, help you out with these, uh, with your story as well. Parang that's that's an that's so fulfilling for me as someone who loves stories, as someone who who loves crafting stories and being a part of them. So being able to see um, how how things play out in the game and then contribute to the larger part of the story that's mm-hmm. that's fulfilling it something that you won't get off of um public games unless the people that you play public games with are very like tight knit na talaga so that's why for me it's really important to find a really good um yeah. f- friend set who play mm-hmm. this, uh, your game with yeah yeah yeah, and, and and with great schedules as well. Yeah, okay. it's the schedule still. It's the greatest threat to so, all of. Yeah, things. so uh, we'll be playing and hopefully completing the module on Thursday, right, Carlo? Yeah. Are you available? Yeah, Thursday. So yeah, yeah. So hopefully that will be like a regular thing, like Thursday nights D and D. Um, 
would be something that we could continue. And maybe as we settle into our new schedules, maybe we can look into going into like hardcovers and stuff. Yeah, hardcover. Oh, I sense a, I sense a curse of Strad coming in. <laughs> maybe I've been reading. I've been reading Strad. Um, it's it's an interesting book. Um, it's not as um, it's kind of like like a very open ended book uh, in the sense mm-hmm. that you can particularly enforce your own you know how you would want to manage the the curse of strad thing but yeah maybe maybe curse of strad not sure maybe toa maybe something happens if our all bard group goes into like the vampire ridden place of curse of strad <laughs> oh, no. oh shit yeah that would, that would be nice question mark but yeah all right yeah that would be interesting <laughs> Uh, yeah so uh yeah as we're wrapping up yeah it's been an hour i think more or less of uh, just us talking it's been really fun talking about games you know this is what the short rest is supposed to be like you know as (laughs) you talk about games and what happened but uh, we totally appreciate uh you hanging out for uh, with us uh and if you have like games you'd like to discuss or modules you'd like us to run for the week and then we can talk about it like what worked what didn't work or what what the elements of certain modules are, you know. We didn't really go into the modules because we're not complete yet, so we couldn't discuss. I, I, I wouldn't want to discuss the module in, com- in, in its entirety because spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but essentially we'll be talking about it. Hopefully we'll be talking about it on our next episode, like how the module went and how the mod- in, yeah. like a module in review or something like that. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry, guys. Our old bird party will live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will live. Like it's 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 fine. Like it's it's fine, right? It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be fine, guys. Yeah. And then there's this uh, dragon salikod ko. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All so, right. uh, any any parting words for the week, Carlo? Before we end um, our short rest. Uh, well, firstly, we'd like to know where they can find you, Fonzie. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram, uh, also on Twitter, but mostly on Facebook. I have a Facebook page uh, for our coaching company, Activate Leadership PH. And you can find me on Instagram or uh, Twitter at, at Fonzie Toot, F-O-N-Z-I-T-O-O-T. All How right. about you, Carlo? And you can find me at uh, carlogeeksout.com that's my website you can also find me in my socials we'll post it uh, in the description below mm-hmm. I'll also post uh, the uh, Fonzie's uh, social places below and yeah um, you can also this is going to be uploaded in the channel if you haven't liked and subscribed and you really like seeing and hearing us talk about D&D please like and subscribe to our channel yep. please uh, follow our Spotify playlists mm-hmm. And please give us con- uh, give us our recommendations on what you talked about. Let us know if you don't agree with anything. We will tell you how wrong you are. At least Fonzie will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he does. It's a feat. And yeah, we'll see you guys again next time. It's uh, our short rest is over. The day is um, the, the sun is rising once again in the land of Faron, and there are some monsters that we need to seduce. We'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye. Bye. A short rest with Fonzie and Carla.